What's going on everybody? So, big day for the E36 today. We are gonna be fitting the new RFs. So, let's get started here. So as I may have mentioned in the last video, these were supposed to be eight and a half squared, the rears are a 10, which a 10 on the back of a stock body E36 is not really that easy to fit. So we got a few tools here. We got a nice fender roller, and we got a $17 Harbor Freight heat gun. That should do the trick, right? So to start with this video, we are gonna start with the rears. You see, I don't even have tires mounted yet. I had a bit of an issue with that. So you can see I got two tires here. The company actually sent me the wrong rear tire sizes. So I got screwed there. I was supposed to get the tires mounted tomorrow. We're gonna have to wait and see if I can get it done, if they come in by then or not. They sent the new ones, so we'll kind of see how that pans out. So I don't have any tires done yet, but the rears are gonna have to be, uh, the quarters are gonna have to be pulled a little bit, or rolled a little bit, I guess you could say. The fronts will be simple, uh, camber and ride height adjustment. The rear is going to be ride height, fender, uh, maybe camber. I'm hoping not. I don't want to add any camber, but if we have to, we might might be able to. But anyway, let's get this thing up in the air and let's get going with the fender rolling. I've never done it before. Well, I, I kind of have on a Friends E30, which we didn't really take any precautions into it. We kind of just baconed them. That was when we were kids. So I'm going to try to be a little more respectful of this car because I don't want to ruin it. I hate the idea of doing this, but Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Back end up in the air, jack stands, gotta be safe. Wheels off, and then we gotta mount up the uh, the actual fender roller. This is like an Eastwood one. So it bolts onto the hub using the lugs. Gotta find the right bolt pattern. There we go. If you're not familiar, these E36s have like a double walled uh, quarter and inside there some people say they put rubber there's no rubber on this i don't know if that's an e46 thing or not or if this car somehow was taken out already there's no rubber um but you want to get the debris out of there a lot of debris and stuff will get stuck up in there and if you start rolling and there's a pebble it's gonna pop through your freaking paint so you don't want that go up oh there we go e-brake down car out of gear. Okay, so now let's see what kind of motion we got. I think it's actually perfect. Okay, so that's good. Before we start actually rolling, we gotta heat this up or else you're gonna crack your paint. You could also use a hair dryer, but in my mind, a hair dryer won't get this hot, uh, probably could get it hot enough but the time it will take you know time is money and I don't want my mom to yell at me for using her hair dryer so we push this snug and then I believe one full turn to get it kind of started oh my god my bumper's coming up So now the key with this is patience. So that's it. you want to be patient with it. You don't want to go too much at once because you're gonna um, you're gonna just destroy it. I'm gonna go a little lower with this. All right, we're gonna go out more. going too far and blasting my bumper bracket. So I'm going to now take off the roller and mock up the BBS and kind of see how far off we are. We're not far off. We're, we're higher, or we're, the wheel's not as high up as it will be. The higher you go, the more natural camber will happen. So we will have more clearance the higher we go. But we're not terribly far off. A few moments later. I think we got it. I think we got it. I'm freaking, woo, I am very excited right now. All right, time to flip the camera. Ooh. Oh man, 
I did not think that this was going to go well, but I would say it went well. Cause let me get the light. If you look, probably can't tell on camera, but that wheel is within the quarter and when it is rolling, it should clear. As of right now, it looks like it'll clear anyway, uh, but if we hit bumps, it'll camber more. So I think it will be perfect. Literally perfect. And by the way, this isn't jacked up with no shock. This is the ride height set. I went ahead and set the ride height too. Basically, I maxed out the coils, and this is where it puts you. And I would say this is perfect. I can't foresee me needing to go any higher. We'll, we'll see once I get the tires on. Um, I, I warned you guys from the start, this car is going to be pretty, pretty stancy. So... I'll probably just keep it like here. If I find that the car is completely unbearably undrivable and a disaster, then maybe we'll go up a little bit. But I don't really see that being an issue because my other E36 is kind of the same route. So I could not be more excited right now because, I mean, just look at that. That looks so freaking sick. But, but regardless of how cool this looks, I'd have to say a job well done to myself on this fender rolling. I think it looks... I mean, perfect. Like, it's it's uniform throughout. It's tastefully rolled, or I don't know if you'd call it pulled, or, or I don't know what you would really call this. I mean, it's rolled, not really pulled. Uh, pulled, I think, is more so when you bend that lip, which looks horrible. And you can see the lip does bow out a little bit. That's just kind of how it how it how this works when you do it like this. That was so much work, and I gotta do it all over again. Such a freaking pain. That's what a stock quarter looks like so I mean you could see I really didn't even like all that noticeably modify it like it's it's really not like to, to the naked eye or to the un you know to this person that doesn't know I don't think you would ever really assume this is rolled or pulled some of us e36 guys maybe you know but regardless I am stoked oh I should also note there is in fact rubber in these quarters I did not realize that and as I was squishing it I've, I've realized that there was rubber for some reason, on this car, it was painted. I don't know if this car's had body work done or not, paint work, but it was painted, so I couldn't tell. I thought it was supposed to be black. So it will sneak up on you, and you can get the roll just like this with the rubber, so if you don't pull it out, it's not the end of the world. But I'm gonna try to get it out of that side just to make the roll a little bit easier. So anyway, just to forewarn you guys, I was wrong. There is, in fact, rubber lining. This is the rubber I was talking about. So on this side, I've been going crazy getting this rubber out of the inside. Some of this is leaves, but most of this you can see is rubber chunks. So I've been going at it with a razor blade and screwdrivers and the heat gun. I heat it up, razor blade it to kind of cut it up, and then you scrape it out with a screwdriver. So like I suspected, without that rubber, it rolled super nice. You probably can't see that well. But it, it, it rolled it like paper thin, like I can't even get my finger in it. Like it's, it's totally flattened right here which is nice, so I have more room with pretty much less roll, but I'm pretty sure I pulled it about the same. And boom, this side is done just like that. So we're all loaded up and ready to go visit our friends over at Gap Auto Clinic. That's the only guy I let touch my nice wheels. I was lucky enough to find him locally. He did my HREs and everything, and you notice I had the two HREs in the trunk. That is because uh, I think I knocked off a couple of the wheel weights on one of the front wheels because I had some shake last season And I just dealt with it because I didn't feel like taking them off But I figured while I'm going to see him I might as well go uh, bring him those and check the balance on them because I'm not gonna go anywhere else Okay, so it's actually a day later now We got the tires put on You see the stretch? I'm actually pretty excited. These came out pretty much how I wanted the stretch matches I went with um Falcon Otsu's in the front, which I know runs skinny. And this is a 20540 on an eight and a half. 20540 on an eight and a half. Nexon is not stretched at all. This is a 21540 on a 10. And the stretch is, I mean, about perfect. But so yesterday the tires didn't get mounted because I didn't even know this. This car didn't come with valve stems, obviously. And you know, you wouldn't ever think twice about it, which I didn't think twice about it. I said, all right, whatever, I'll go get the generic ones from O'Reilly's. Turns out these BBSs, RFs, RSs, these older BBSs use a 5.5 millimeter valve stem hole, which is really skinny. Uh, you cannot get that from any local store. 
Most places don't have it. Even on the internet, few places have them. BBS genuine stems are 16 a pop and not easily, not easy to find. Any place that had them, you know, it was going to be a, a week of shipping and I was super bummed because I didn't want to wait. But, old trick here, I will, I will inform you guys. This is an old head thing. I found this deep in the forums. I think Volkswagen forums. If you go to the Harley dealership and you ask them for this part number right here, these Harley Davidson valve stems fit perfectly in your RS and RFs. It's damn near the same diameter. They got the rubber on the bottom, the bolt on the top. They look great. These, uh, they don't come with caps. We, we put these caps on. Eric gave them to me. But, uh, yeah. So, if you have RS, RFs, R, RSs or RFs, sorry, and you need valve stems, go to the Harley dealership. They're like $6.80 a pop. Way cheaper than the BBS ones. And they'll fit. So, that's what we did. So, now the day is saved. Then we can fit these. So I'm going to throw the rears on, lower the rear. It should all be set up how I want it. Hopefully nothing rubs. And then we're going to move on to the fronts after I eat some breakfast. I think this is going to be perfect. Excuse the noise. The neighbor's getting a new roof, so it's loud. But these tires don't look like they're going to interfere with the body at all, dude. Look at that. These are literally, I literally, not to toot my own horn, these are rolled perfectly for these wheels. No additional camber, nothing besides natural. The toe is pretty bad. Definitely gonna need an alignment on this. So now I'm gonna adjust the front suspension and meanwhile, we got my PDR guy here trying to fix this. I just want to disclose that this is from previous owners. Uh, I know how to fit wheels better than to destroy my fenders. So like this fender is just destroyed. This side's not bad. He's going to try to mallet this back somewhat straight. It's a little wavy. But uh, this one's actually not bad at all. So I'll probably not even mess with this one. It looks like they like tried to roll this. But just did a really poor and uneven job or this is what happens when you run a car really low but with thick tires so yeah sorry the pdr guy is just hammered away at my fender why does it start to get harder because the sway bar Oh. oh yeah, the sway bar bushing is like com totally compressed. Yeah. First try. Oh god, it's horrible. Oh, yeah, it looks like we got another two inch. We're like max these out. So this is looking good, but uh, sway bar was really fighting me, so I came around and did this side and got them even. So these coils are honestly close to max. I'll show you when I get the car back up. Ride height's not bad, but. I want this tire to be closer to the um, fender because I don't think I'm not going fender to lip. That's just not the car will be extremely raked. So I'd rather just space this out a little bit because uh, I, you know, I don't want this gap here. So we're gonna go to the 540 and steal its spacers because the rears have the size I think I need, and uh, then we're gonna come back in here and refit these once we rob the the 540. So this is how the wheel's looking. We got the 20 mil from the 540 in here. So now we obviously add camber because it's too far out. So you know the BCs have the, the top hats here with the little Allen key 5 mil. All we gotta do is, I need to, so since we're going with a decent amount of camber, I gotta pull these bolts out of the location they're in because they will uh, be too far forward. Gotta take them out completely and re-put them closer. Camber is maxed out. Fitment is good, I think. Could be a little more cambered, but. Oh, you can add washers at the bottom of your strut. I'm just not doing that. <laughs> that is exactly what we wanted. I'm gonna have to go higher, I don't know. Damn. 
Oh God, you know what we didn't do? We didn't measure the we didn't measure the thing. So if this side's perfect, I gotta take the wheel off anyway. Yeah. Oh, to match it. Oh, stupid mistake every time. First drive off the wood. <laughs> it turns. God damn. Oh, this side's a little lower. Oh, that looks hot. That looks hot. <laughs> this fender will forever be f that fender is destroyed. Not my doing. This one's no, I guess not. What is that noise? It's touching something. Maybe the maybe the shock is touching the or the wheel is touching the coil because it's a nine. That's eight and a half. Oh, eight and a half. It's like a negative negative seven offset. That's definitely not what it is. Oh. Oh. Is that fender liner? Yeah. I don't think you're gonna see it. Nope. It's touching the fender liner. Okay, so the fender liner's coming off. <laughs> I'm not gonna raise it. No, this looks perfect. Damn! Wait, hold on. Let me see. Oh yeah, it turns all the way. Oh, we got a full lot. Look at this. Get, get in there. That's what you want. Wait, did you hear the noise? Yeah. Oh, that doesn't sound like fender liner. No, it's something. It's not touching the coil. No. Finishing touches right here. I don't even know if I touched on this. So I got uh, my buddy Funky Bavarian, 70 mil caps. So these aren't three tab caps like what they're supposed to be. These are like more, these are like Mitsubishi uh, four tab. Cut the tabs off and epoxy them in because I was not spending $215 on freaking BBS caps. I got these for a great deal. So, dude, dude, dude. I'm not locking them right now. This is just for show. I'll lock them later, but. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Now we step away and we look. Oh, those transform it. Yes. Yeah, I know. This is this is good. This is honestly way better than I thought this would turn out. I did not think a 10 would fit in the back of an E36. I did not think that that would work, but lo and behold, it did. And we got the front spaced and cam the camber matches. Perfect camber match, exactly. It's always a no-no to have more camber in the rear than the front, which is what sucks about E34s, because when you ride them low, you can't adjust the rear camber, so they always kind of fall victim to that. But, damn, that is, woo! Again, sorry for all that noise, so I'm back in the garage with the door closed. So, car is perfect. I think the heights are exactly where we want it, the camber's where we want it, but that clicking sound that I was talking about when I first pulled it out is actually the studs hitting the um, inner hub either the wheel speed sensor or the brakes or something. So apparently those studs, I had them in the rear of the 540, the rear hub on a uh, E34 and in most of these cars doesn't have anything for them to hit, so it doesn't really matter how long they are, but when up in the front, they give issues. So apparently those aren't meant for 20s, those are meant for 25s, but looking through my toolbox here, I saved these thinking I'd never need them. I actually have wheel studs. And not only do I have wheel studs, I have wheel studs meant for 20 mil spacers. The far right is for a 25 mil. You can see the difference there, and I got them just kind of half ass lined up. And then this is the same length as this. So these are actually a 20 mil acceptable lugs, so or studs. So temporarily, I'm just going to put my studs back in this car because I want to be able to drive this today and see how it goes. Uh, the drive will be in a different video. We'll talk about how this car drives and stuff. But for now, I'm going to be doing this. Otherwise, we will wrap this up here. The car is fitted. 
We'll, we will end this video with a nice little cinematic clip of the new setup. I am freaking stoked. This looks badass, dude. Like, I could not imagine this to have fit so good. The rears with a little bit of a pull, perfect. Who would have thought 10s would fit so well in the rear of an E36? The fronts, amazing. I'm in love with these wheels. I'm in love with the look of this car. We have completely transformed it from junk to this, and I could not be more excited. I mean, look at this, all one color, nice wheels, nice suspension. It's like, it's like a dream come true, man. I miss, I made a story saying I miss dialing in static cars and everyone laughed like I was kidding. I was not kidding. This is so rewarding and fun to dial in camber specs, ride height, wheel, all that stuff. It just gives you this feeling that like an air car, an air car won't do just because it's as simple as pressing a button. But dialing in a ride height that will clear everything is super rewarding when it's done. I'm so excited about all this. So yeah, guys, this is going to be a wrap on this. So I'll leave you with a cinematic. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. More stuff to come with the E36. Now we can be going on the E34 pretty soon. See you in the next one.